Here's your existing building you can see remains uh, and is respected uh, without any exterior modifications. Um, so this is a, a, a different examination based on, you know, the um, idea of maybe acquiring that land. And this is what the interior might look like for Scheme B. Um, it has some exposed uh, beams, uh, main beams, and exposed secondary, what we call purlins or secondary beams, and the uh, ceiling vaults over the sanctuary and tabernacle um, with the rose window facing, uh, facing the, the road. Fan-shaped seating again. So scheme B, existing area is the same. Proposed is a little bit less. It's 19,134 for a total of 37, uh, 339. The renovated area is about the same amount of square footage for renovation in both schemes. And that is the end of the presentation. And I'm happy to take uh, questions. Uh, Jeff's going to turn on the lights for us. Um, but I want you to know that this plan is something that can be phased in over time. It's not something that you'd have to do right away. And I have a question in the back. Uh, yes, ma'am? Would it still be just one entrance and exit, just one drive in and out? Well, there would just be one drive in and out unless you acquire more land. I think if you acquire the other piece of property, you could probably get another curb cut further towards the south there. And that would really be a blessing to have another way <laughs> in and out. Um, but unless you buy more land, it's going to be hard to get another curb cut. Good question. Yes, sir. If you break this up into phases, what would be phase one? Okay. Good question. Phase one, it would look sort of like this. I'm glad you asked that. That was a setup question. <laughs> <laughs> you, you two have been practicing. <laughs> he claims he never met me. <laughs> All right, I hope you can read the text okay with the lights on. I think you can, but this is what we thought of as, as the phasing. And you may have a different approach, but I think this is pretty logical. You could build a new worship building, which is only about 14,600, renovate the existing worship, which is about 4,900, and that can be the extent of phase one. The beautiful part about that is that you don't have to be out of a place to worship while you build that new building. It's completely outside of the footprint of this building. So you could build that whole structure, Make it occupiable, get the certificate of occupancy, and you can only break through at the very end. And then you can start to worship in that space, and then you can renovate the existing worship space uh, as you uh, had that one complete. Phase two would be building this education wing, which is that little tail that turns north, where the double loaded corridor turns and heads north. It's got about six classrooms and a youth space. It's about 4,500 square feet. And then we would renovate the existing education wing in that sequence. So that could be the extent of phase two. Phase three, it, three and four are really interchangeable. We said three was expanding this space. And you could knock this wall out and build that way for about another 1,600 square feet, which would give you 50% increase in capacity, or more if you wanted to. And then phase four would be building the worship balcony expansion, which is about 4,300 square feet in either scheme. And you might, you might get to the point where you needed this sooner. So there's nothing magic about the order of these last two things, but I think that the first domino that would have to fall would be to build a new worship space so that you had a place to worship in, uh, when you repurposed your existing one. Does that answer your question? Yes. Yes, yes ma'am. We have to move out of the um, worship building that's a good question. Um, what was it? The question was, would you have to move out of the new worship building when you were ready to build the balconies? And it's really a question for a contractor because it has to do with um, how they would sequence the work. Jeff, do you have an opinion on that? It might be hard. There is one chance you can continue to occupy the worship space. You might have to. Can everyone hear me? Yeah. Uh, there's a small chance you could continue to occupy the worship space by walling off the area of the work. You probably have to have a larger number of smaller masses just for a short time. But because of the way the building would be designed, the balconies 
would be a relatively small amount of work. The structure would already be in for them except for the beam that carries in front of the balcony proper. So it would really be a, a short span of time and that you might have to do that. Again, Carter's correct. It's really a question for a contractor, but there is a chance you can continue to worship while the construction. <laughs> Jeff is exactly right. And the way we would design, we would design the, the footings or the foundations for those future columns when we built phase one. We're doing that on another church right now. In fact, I reviewed the drawings last night. The footings are below the slab and they're designed and they'll have marks on them on the slab where the center lines of those footings are. So you can cut the carpet back, mount the uh, steel columns and build the balconies. But um, you could always move into here temporarily if you had to do it first couple of short periods of time. But, uh, yes, sir? Yes, I understand uh, that Scheme B would include purchasing the property for the south, and that's a big question mark. But in Scheme A, knowing what you know about the square footage and everything, what would be the estimated cost? To do the, estimated, all of scheme A? The, the estimated cost to do all of Scheme A? Yes. Uh, I think the total value of all four phases, I think yes. we had a, a number of approximately $6 million. It's sort of in that ballpark. That includes the hard costs and soft costs. Thank you, church. If you did just the church or just phase one, it's probably in the four to four and a half million dollars for phase one, including the renovation of the existing worship. Uh, it's sort of, in, sort of in that ballpark. Thank you. Yes. Uh, yes, sir. What would be the time requirement for the uh, for the balcony? If you get me, what, how, much, how long would it take to do that? Um, it's all interior work. You wouldn't be uh, affected by the weather. Uh, doesn't change the envelope. It's probably going to take uh, maybe a couple of months. Jeff? Probably. If they ordered all the materials ahead of time and staged it and had everything ready, it would be a short actual uh, inconvenience for the church. Yeah. He said if you ordered all the materials in advance and had it all set up, you could probably do it in maybe as fast as two months. And, and what would be the cost of that addition? The balconies? Yes. Um, which is phase four. Um, none of these numbers have been reviewed by contractors, but it's just as an order of magnitude, I think, the uh, to expand that extra 400 uh, seats is... Uh, it's probably in the name of, in the neighborhood of around four hundred thousand dollars, just ballpark. It could may may be a little bit less than that, but. Uh, and would the cost to do that be less if it were done at the same time you built the new uh, building? The cost would be less if you build it now. Yes. Right. It so, will always be well. Two reasons it's cheaper. One is because today's dollars are uninflated because inflation is going to get us, construction costs will go up. But the other thing is that when the contractor is already on site and he's what we call a mobile,